thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Rabba Shatele Kofani Eskala. Elana Makofi Edo Kofo Bakashi Jesus. Lord, we thank you because. What you do endures forever. Yes, Lord. Nobody can take your miracle away. Yes, Lord. What the Lord does, it does forever. Hey. Thank you because my testimonies will bring men to their Thank knees. You, Jesus. In surrender to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you because your testimonies will be loud. Thank you, Lord. I worship you. Thank you, Father. I declare that the rest of this year is the best of your year. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All the things that you've waited for, I declare that now is your time for Amen. my Amen. In the name Jesus, Amen. he said you will overturn and overturn and overturn until it becomes my time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor congratulations. Congratulations. Because your time is now. Tell them your testimony has been made complete. And nobody on the face of earth can take it away. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. May we be seated in God's presence. Thank you, mighty Father. Vesha filo bokofi bano koshka. Breke tu kofo pali o kofi atala basha valiantu. Elena na makofi ele koposhka fiande. Ikro tu feki na makofi ato. Emeno kofi le na makosha vilo na 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 makofa bahai. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yela makofi ando kosha fali ande kapakofa. Ile na 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 makofi ande kapuronde kibali asofende bi akofa. Hello, shavaliendo. There's somebody watching me now, and you've been thinking about committing suicide. And God is saying to me, He said, "Your life is carefully in the palm of my hands." He says, "I watch over it daily." He said, "Don't do it." And in the name of Jesus, that spirit of fear that's tossing you, tormenting you, to want to kill yourself, I break it off you now. In the name of Jesus, thank you, mighty Father. He says, "I will bring restoration your way." In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Vele bo kofapi londo vo kapali ando kofakata. Elige digi bi kofara da ba kofi ende kosha. Elika. If you can pray in the Holy Ghost, can you pray in the Holy Ghost? Vele ke bo kofi da ma kosha vila kapali eto. Ezele ni kofi ne mukofi ne mikufa pahaya. Ele de di beki furu ne meki. Lima ne kapaya bakasho. Eno shavila da 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 da. I break boundaries out of their ways. Ilo mo ne bi eto tiato. I command the enemy take your hands off. In the name of Jesus, for we bear the mark of Christ. Ivo liba kofi ne ne ba shavaye. I stand against. In the name of Jesus, of all of us, you go far. Eva ni mo kofi ele kiosko bahaya. Ele ne mo kofi ele gabo shavi ende le kosi vaya. Ele ne ne de mo kofi eva ne kofi ele gadeya. I take authority over you, foul spirit of the enemy. Aye ba shaya. I command you get out of them. In the name of Jesus. Ele kofi ele kapa de kofi atalia. Ilan ne mo kofi ando kofa baha. Eliga mano kofi ando kofi to kopa. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Chains have been broken. Hallelujah. Chains have been broken. Chains, boundaries have been taken away. Ha ye kofi ando kofi to kopa haya. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your word that's able to change us and transform us, able to heal, help, able to deliver your word that gives us direction and gives us strength to do what it says. Thank you for capacity to do what your word says. Thank you for wisdom to know how to do. Lord, we honor you. We pray for marriages in this place. We declare the healing will come into our marriages, oh God. Wisdom comes, grace comes to be able to do according to your bidding, oh God. To the end that all the glory will be yours and all the blessings will be ours. We give you praise, mighty Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Aye. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, church. Vo paf, veli bo kofa biatushka. Le do kofa pa kofi be de koshi ve de ka. Ele kosh. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Good morning, church. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, church. Have you said something amazing to your neighbor this morning? Did you say amazing? (laughs) Say, Jesus loves you and you're so beautiful and mean what you say. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your sweet presence in this place. Thank you because I will teach without hindrance. Speak the heart of the Father to to your people, O God, that their lives will not remain the same. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Um, As a church, we've been talking about communication uh, from last week, this week. um, And it's been a powerful time, praise God. I bring you greetings from my pastor and my husband. Pastor Balaji Dowu, he loves you, he misses you, but he's like, you guys should enjoy. (laughs) Praise God. So last week we talked about the meaning of communication. We talked about some of the uh, misconceptions we have about um, communication, reasons why we've not been able to move past where we are, you know, as regards communication. And one of the things we said was that, you know, people don't truly understand the power of words. Praise God. And how many remember anything that we said about words, that what people think about words? Anybody remember? If you're in first service, don't talk. Second service, as. Anybody remember? Words are, I can't hear. Spilling. No need. I can't hear you. Why is it? Ah. Non invasive. Words are powerful. Words are words are revealing good. Words are substitutionary. Then yeah, and then words are evaporative. Words are not evaporative, but people think they're evaporative. Praise God. And then we also talked about the differences between. Thank you. You preach third service. (laughs) You know, we also talked about the differences between men and women and stuff like that. Praise God. And this morning we're continuing in the teaching of communication and I'm going to share with you a few things. You know, I'm going to talk about the levels of communication. I'm going to talk about some foundations that has to be or needs to be if your communication will be effective. Praise God. Can you go with me to Ephesians 4 verse 29? Media, if you would help me, I would be grateful. Ephesians 4 verse 29. The Bible says, let no foul, foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever, ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others. This translation is quite spiritual. As is good and as is beneficial to the spiritual, financial, uh, mental, um, physical, emotional progress of others. As is fitting for the need and the occasion. Oh, I love it. I love this amplified. Because the KJV didn't say fitting to the need. The KJV says fitting Uh, talked about the the occasion as the word fits the occasion but this is powerful it says let no foul language abusive language any language that talks the other down let it not come ever come out of your mouth if the bible says let it not ever means that there is a possibility that it is possible it is possible for the words that always comes out of your mouth to produce power, to produce love, to produce grace, to produce a building up, to produce increase. It's possible. For God to say it, it means it's, an, it's possible. Praise God. It says that ever come out of your mouth. But only such words that are good. Words that people can perceive, can see, can, can name as good. As it's fitting Good and beneficial to the progress of others. Words that build up, words that increase, words that empower. He says that, that, he says, as is fitting to the need. Last week we talked about this. We said that when people, when you communicate, if you're going to communicate effectively, you have to communicate based on the need 
of the person that you're speaking to. An example of that is women have a need for security. If as you communicate with your wife, if your words don't communicate security, your wife has issues with it. She cuts off immediately. There's a jamming frequency. She can't hear you because there's no proceeding. There's no, there's no building up. There's no security. There's nothing that says that, oh, I'm important to you. There's nothing that says that, oh, I come first in your words. I'm not talking about the exact words you're saying. I'm talking about the behind encryption of your words. It says fitting to the need and the occasion. It means that there is a word for every season. This is so powerful and so mind-blowing and eye-opening. There is a word that is befitting for each season. One of my uh, younger sisters, you know, called me and told me that, oh, my husband is angry. I said, what happened? She said, sometimes maybe he lost his job. Can you come? And immediately he lost his job. She just said, so what's the plan? She was reporting herself to me. But she didn't know what she did wrong. She just said, he's angry. I don't know why he's angry. God, I was asking him, what's the plan? And I said, when did you ask him that was the plan? She said, as he was telling me. That he loves I said, wow. What a befitting princess of a wife. As the guy is telling you that he loves you, the next thing you want to say is, that, what's the, how will he know the plan? Like, did he plant? But I'll tell you something. It's so powerful. Because remember last week we talked about the fact that your words proceed from the inside. It's your heart gone, 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 that produces the kinds of words that you speak. So what to really work on is not your words, but your heart. So I'll tell you what. So I said, I said, how can you be telling him right there and then that what's the plan? She said, ah. You know, I said, that's a wrong time. I said, you're supposed to validate. You're supposed to encourage. You're supposed to fill him with faith and say, don't worry. Promotion comes with God. You're supposed to hug him and tell him you'll be there and you'll be supportive. And that whatever happens, you will not go away. You'll be, uh, you'll be present physically, emotionally, psychologically, in any way, darling. I'm here for you. Hallelujah. It's their loss, not yours. They lost something mighty. But guess what? When I got to the root of it, she said, this guy had an inclination that he was going to lose the job. That's why she said, what's the plan? Because she expected that since you had an inclination, you should have planned. The heart. So people don't just say words. Their heart is speaking. There's something in their heart. And that's why it's important to, let me not jump. It's okay. Time must finish. Six major levels of communication. The first one, singles, I came for you. The first one, major levels of communication. So the progression of your communication. The first one is basic information. It's just when you say, hi, hello, what's your name? I'm there. I'm clinical. Where do you work? You know, but for couples, basic info. Oh, the children have gone to school. Are you okay? Where are you going? Coming back, going. The second one, partnership. For couples, partnership is... Um, uh, you spend your life together, so you share your life together. So your kids, uh, 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 roles and responsibilities, uh, what else? Finances. Um, what again? Responsibilities, finances, needs, your needs. So that's partnership. The third one, conflict resolution. So it's a progression. Basic needs, a uh, basic information, partnership, conflict resolution. There is no good marriage without conflict. So every marriage seeks resolution for their conflict. Praise God. So this is where you find resolution. You communicate to talk about resolution. About, oh, how can we make this better? How can I make you happier? How can I, you know? And the fourth one is connection. I'm rushing. Fourth one is connection. These are verbal or non-verbal ways to get emotional value, validation, uh, uh, affection, bonding, fondness, right? As a couple. So connection, you're connecting. You go out to dinner. Both of you are seated. And... Um, uh, 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 as you're talking, eye contact, you know, con con connection speaks about eye contact. You know, you're smiling towards each other. You're praising each other. Do you know you're so pretty? Oh, only fine girl, only fine girl that I know. Amen. You know, uh, um, uh, connection entails um, compliments, um, non-sexual touch, eye contact, hugs, things like that. So, and one thing I want you to, to know, and singles learn this. 
the harder it is for you to connect with a person, the harder it is for you to connect with your spouse, the higher the chances of divorce. Married people. When you can't connect, this thing is just like we jive, you know. My, your vibes, that's how you, we call it now, Abby. We're vibing. As I'm feeling their vibe. I'm feeling their vibe. Vibe is very important. It's not the only thing. Vibe never kept a marriage. But vibe is very important. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the fifth thing is personal information and revelation. This is where you begin to open up, you know, talk about your past experiences, how somebody hurt you in the past or something mighty you did in the past, something glorious, you know, talk about you. I want to open up me, my inside. The one I've not told anybody. I want to open it up to you. So personal information. Um, this is where you personally express, you know, um, some of the things so that, ah, Jesus is Lord. Yeah, so you express some of the things that um, nobody else knows about you, your thoughts, your feelings, your dreams, you know. And I said something in the first service. I said, when somebody else is sharing their wins, when your spouse is sharing their wins, or you go on a date with a girl and she's sharing her win, don't be like, ah, yes, me too, uh -uh, I got promotion. Why? Is it your glory? Are you, is it spotlight on you right now? No. Allow the person share their own and rejoice with them. We're not in comp. What do you say? Yes, let them shine their shine. Your time will come to shine your shine. This is very important. I've seen couples fight over this. How many understand what I'm saying? When somebody else is sharing, encourage their sharing. Make it bigger. What are you still? Hey! Don't vibes, vibes, vibes. Do you understand? You are happier for than the person that the thing happened to God. Genuinely, it's important. It's important. Personal information and revelation. They're opening up themselves to you. And the sixth one is intimate communication. This is the highest form of communication where deep is calling on to deep. Where you open up that you killed somebody when you were 16. Where you opened up that you've had 15. When you open up that you've had 15 abortions. Where you open up that you were a cult member. Where you open up that it doesn't have to be bad, bad things. <laughs> Praise God. Where you can open up that horn, you like chandelier hanging. Amen. Yeah. Where you can open up that. No, let's not go there. Let's keep moving. Amen. If communication fails on any level, every level will fail. If communication fails on the basic level, Singles, I'm still coming. If communication fails on any level, every level will fail. I'll give you an example. If I'm communicating to my spouse and talking about my needs, which is partnership, and all I get in return is rejection. All I get in return is lack of attention to what I'm saying. You're not listening. You're, 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 you know, you're, uh, 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 um, <sighs> English. Distracted, thank you. You know, what happens is that even though what I'm communicating is, is partnership, I can never go beyond that partnership to conflict resolution. Why? Because one level of communication is hindered. Now, I'll tell you a story. A story of Becca. Do you know Becca? Do you know Becca? You all don't know Becca? Do you know Rebe? Sister Rebe? Ah, you were us. Ah, you don't know Becca. Well, you know Rebbe. <laughs> Amen. The story of Rebecca and Isaac in the Bible. I don't want us to read it because of time. You know, Bible talks about Rebecca. You know how uh, Isaac's father said they should go and look for a wife for Isaac. You know, he was chilling. It's his daddy that was looking for a wife for him. I mean, that was okay in their culture. But now, your mama don't look for a wife for you. It's not your mommy that will tell you that this is the wife you should marry. I'm coming, I'm coming, singles. It's not your mommy that tells you. Neither is it your daddy, daddy's girls. You're not a baby. If you don't know what to do, go into the scripture and go to your pastor to tell you what did the Bible say. Because your daddy can tell you to choose somebody that, what was their own marriage like before they come and tell you this, who to marry? They did the best that they could. We love our parents and we honor them. But we do better than them because we know better. Praise God. So not your daddy, not your mommy. 
not your friends either, or not your best friend who is a female. Praise God. So, Rebecca, oh, they now went to go and meet her. Then, Rebecca, you are looking fine. I want to marry you. You are, you are, you are a good girl. Amen. Rebe. The Bible says she was beautiful. When the servant came, you know, he said, God, I'm going to test this girl. I'm going to look at her behavioral pattern. When they got there, he said, can I have water? Oh, she said, yes, sir. She now did over and beyond what they asked her. She didn't only give him one. She said, even your camels, I sought them out. Are you listening? Be kind. <laughs> and realized that it was a servant that was talking to Rebecca. Important to bring that out. It, was a, it wasn't a guy in a jiwako. She did not know that the brother that she was going to meet was the G-Wagon brother. Uh, this was the driver of the G-Wagon brother. <laughs> Can you be nice to your house help? Because you never know whether the house help is the right hand man of the G-Wagon brother. Hmm. Anyway, that's not where I'm going. Rebecca, Rebecca, her parents say, this guy that you have not known from anywhere, this guy, you have never seen him, you have never known him. Are you going to go? She said, yeah. Imagine. Imagine. She went. Bible says that when Isaac saw her, Bible says Isaac took her and knew her as his wife. He took her. Do you know what that means? He took her. They went straight from sin to drop pants and legs wide open. Single people. Do you know where they started from? The bottom level of communication. That's where they started from. Hey! Singles! Hey. I told you there's a progression. Basic information, partnership, conflict resolution, connection, personal information, and intimate. This one, they reverse it. You saw. They said, we know what to do. Then they came to intimate. That's where they started from. Their foundation was sexual. And we can see in their marriage that they had nothing but sexual to speak for themselves. Because the Bible says that they were always seen in the public touching, caressing, and doing all those things. It's there in the Matthew 25. Go and read this Bible I'm speaking. Caressing, touching. Amen. They were always doing that. So much so that they, could, they were not even conversing. Rebecca got a um, prophecy, serious prophecy about their destiny, their future, about two children, two, two nations in their womb. One will be this, one will be that. She didn't converse. Nowhere in scripture did it say that Rebecca communicated this to her husband. They didn't have communication. Isaac liked us isolation. He liked to be by himself. Bible said you will be in the field. When Rebecca was doing her own thing. I remember that she couldn't even have a child. And in those days, having children was very important. So Isaac self must have been vexing. Until one day woke up and prayed and God gave them children. And you know how bad their relationship was. Because when they now had the children, two of them now separated the children. Mommy took one, daddy took one. Do you see that in the scripture? You now use your children as tool and weapon. Stop it. I'm showing you something. Singles, don't start from intimate connection. Don't start from partnership. Start from what is your name? Who is your father? Does your daddy beat your mama? Don't ask them directly because they will not tell you. Use a story to ask them. Wisdom. Wisdom. Use a story to ask them. Men. The reason why you date is to understand the character of the person that you are considering. When you are dating, they are still in consideration. You've chosen to date them does not mean you must marry. They are still in consideration. Married people, don't use your children as a tool. Your relationship with your husband comes first before your children. You are already a family before your kids came. Your kids are a welcome addition. Both of you are a family. Single people. A word is enough for the wise. Quickly. 
elements or foundations for good communication. The first thing is tone. I've talked about it last week. If you don't remember, go and watch it. Time has gone. Um, I talked about tone. Praise God. So I talked about tone. And tone basically, you know, everything you say, everything carries a tone. And the tone, you know, um, the tone determines the effectiveness of your words. Right? We talked about how your words are encrypted and how people, de- your spouse can decode from behind what you're trying to say. You can say dif- the same thing in different ways and it communicates different things. Praise God. So be careful. Your tone. Your tone is how you say what you say. It's important to have the goal in view before you begin to speak. What is the goal of my words? The goal of my words is that my husband or my wife will understand what I'm saying and they'll make adjustments, right? So if that's what you want, make sure it's always in view and align your communication to the goal, one, to align your communication to their needs and make sure that your conversation is heartfelt. Tone. Two, time. It's important that you dedicate time to your relationship. So important. Whatever you give time to is valuable. Whatever you give time to will grow. Whatever you give time to will multiply, will increase, will become better. Some of you have businesses 12, 15, 24 hours a day. You are working on the business. How much time do you give to your marriage? How much time do you give to your relationship? If you are dating a guy or a guy is talking to you and he's too busy with his time. He's not the one. Because he's going to get busier. They lied. They lie to me. Yeah. So I know. Say lie. Don't believe it. They say, ah, babe, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Ah, when church just balance and settle like this, you are going to be the next one in line. Um, uh, church, as we are like this, we are still not balanced. We are still growing. Yes, it's a lie. And you know what? They might not actually be lying to you. They might not know because they've not even been there. But when you think about it logically, do you want to progress in life or you want to regress? If you're progressing, you're going to get busier now. It's when you are now old, when you are put all the checks and balances in place, <laughs> when your money is now working for you. But by that time, it's too late. The time has finished. Time, very important. Two things under time. Proactive time. Proactive time means to get away with your spouse. Single, don't get away. Get in touch, don't get away. In touch, in touch. Yeah, don't get away. Get away with your spouse. Keep your children with the grandmas. That's what they are there for. Some women are afraid they can't leave their children. Be like me. <laughs> I love my children. I don't play with my children, but I know how to. You people play. It's me and my husband. Get away three to five days yearly. Hear me, guys. Honestly, hear me. And you might not have the finances to do this, but you don't have to go away, away. You can just borrow your friends out, exchange house, just change of environs. That's it. It depends on your finances. Just make sure you pull back from your everyday, you know, uh, um, you understand? (laughs) So pull back three to five days yearly and discuss. Make decisions ahead. Talk about it. When I hurt you, how do you want me to say sorry? You know that women, if you just say sorry, it does not make sense. What does that mean? Sorry for what? Gang, 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 (laughs) gang. Are you understanding what? Uh, yeah. You understand? I'm sorry for. I'm sorry for. I understand that we men. I we only twenty. Take time out. And you know, proactive time it controls a situation before it happens. That's why it's so important because you've planned for the future, even in your communication. I know that you people plan budget money because <laughs> very important. I know you plan for your money. You plan for the, what else do you plan for? Kids. Some people don't even plan for kids. Very important. You plan, plan for in-laws. When my mommy is coming, what should I, when your mommy is coming, what should I wear? Single brothers, you were taking her, take home to mama. 
to go and meet your mommy, but you know your mommy is not liking yellow, yellow girls. <laughs> you now did not proactively tell her that when you get there, my mother is going to say, ah, ah, she love her, bye. You know, is it this one you want to marry like this? That's what that means. Some moms are like that. Yes, they are just like that. But please leave them and love them. They are how they are. You don't be like that. You didn't proactively tell her that my mom is going to say this. So, so when she says it, don't be angry. That's just how she is. You prep before time. You move faster that way. So you go back, discuss, have a vision retreat. That's what I call it. It's a vision retreat. And it's beneficiary for both of you. Talk about communication manners, communication skill, how you like to be talked to, what's important to you. Talk about your needs so that your spouse can understand you better. It forces you to deal with your value systems. What happens is when you begin to speak, when your spouse begins to speak, you can clearly see yourself as in a mirror, the, the faults, the defects, the, the strengths and the weaknesses, and you can begin to adjust. It's so important. To do this. And the second thing on the time, it, the first one is proactive time. The second one is private time. Private time. 30 to 60 minutes every day. I promise you, try this for this next week. This is your take-home assignment. Couples, 30 to 60 minutes every day. In fact, if you are dating, you can also do it. 30 to 60 minutes every day. No distraction. No TV. No kids. No in-laws. No phones. This generation has found it so hard to, to, to pull away from their phones. And you don't know that when you're pressing your phone, what you don't realize is, and you're communicating with your spouse, the whole world is right there in the room with you. Do you realize that? The whole world is right there in the room with you. And so it's so disregarding for me to be speaking to my husband who loves me and he's on his phone. <laughs> All the time. Sometimes it's, it's, it happens. But not all the time. It just speaks rejection. It speaks you are not important enough. Private time, 30 minutes. Keep the kids at bay. I know that that's when the monsters will come for the children. But tell them that this is the time to learn to trust God for your safety. <laughs> Amen. The third thing is trust. For communication to be effective, there has to be trust. Not just the effectiveness of communication, but for there to be intimacy. Enter me, I enter you. Let's become one, as the scripture says. Trust is necessary. Trust is necessary. And I'm going to go real quick. I'm going to tell you a few things to look at yourself against when it comes to trust. Amen. The first thing is in connection. When it comes to trust, when it comes to connecting with your spouse, are you caring? Are you tender? Are you empathetic? Do you listen? I tell you what listening is. Listening, James 1, 9, James 1 19 says, be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. The Bible says, be slow to speak. That's what listening is. And there is a speaking that is not verbal. I'm talking about the speaking that you are speaking inside you. As your spouse is speaking, you are looking for any form of false statement that they want to make so that you can fire them back. You know, if I just say, babe, I don't think you care about it. Oh, sure, you do care. You are not saying it to a verbal in your mind. You are responding. You are firing them back. When you do that, you are not listening. You are fighting war. To listen means to hear without your mind being focused on how to reject every false statement. Or focused on, let me quickly give you back. Open your heart and see them through their words. Do you listen in connection? When I'm trying to connect with you, when I'm trying to relate with you, when I'm trying to rub your head, do you do like this? Oriade, ah, don't touch it. <laughs> head of crown. It was Oriade. So that we can, we will not understand what we are saying. Crown head. Head of crown. Glorious head. Something like that. Don't touch it. Amen. Yeah. So, um, 
In connection, are you caring? Are you empathetic? When I'm telling you, trying to, oh, babe, I really care about you. Oh, do you show empathy? Do you show eye connection? All of those things. In conflict, are you approachable? When you do wrong, can they approach you? Oh, you're a nigger. You can't try it. Don't, 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 stop it. Are you approachable? Can they come to you, your throne of grace, to tell you, sir, you are wrong? <laughs> or to tell you that, madam, you are very wrong? Can they tell you, or they are afraid? You've tormented their life. You've instilled fear in them. Fear that they don't want for God. <laughs> fear that they can come in boldly with God. You, you are the God of God. <laughs> you are the king of God. They cannot approach you. Are you approachable? Are you responsible? Responsible for your mistakes. Responsible for the things that you didn't do right. Can you accept responsibility? I was wrong. Can you say I'm sorry? Oh, you are too big for that. Are you committed? Do you stay physically and emotionally? Man. Hey, daddy, wa. I love you. I honor you. Praise God. But there's capacity in you to stay. To carry our emotions, if you believe. And when you begin to carry your wife's emotions, grace will be made available. And your life will not remain the same. That's the truth. I know it's tough. And I don't blame men. Because when you try to show emotions, when you were big, you say, hey, keep quiet. Hey! Men don't cry. Come on, be a man. So you sucked it up. And they cut you off from your emotions. So I understand it, men. But you have to learn it. It's important to learn it. My husband had to learn it. And he didn't even know that he was not in touch with his emotions. I had to help him see that he wasn't in touch with his emotions. And thank God, he gave it to God and God helped him. And it's so important that you are in touch with your emotions. Because even you need it for you. Because when you're in touch with your emotions, you understand why and why you do the things that you do. You understand how things that people do to you affect, um, affect you. Sometimes people do stuff to you and you don't even know you're affected. Until after on, after a long time after. And sometimes you're even so confused, you can't deal with it, so you shut it down and run away from it. But what happens is that your emotions keep running after you. You're supposed to deal with them, confront them, and work it out. With help if you need to. Are you available physically and emotionally? Or you are an escapee? Or a ghoster? You ghost her. Ghost him. I didn't say it's anything. Keep going. Don't be a ghosty or a ghoster or an escapee or escaper. Amen. Amen. Stay and work it out. You are strong. You are powerful. You are able. Amen. Stay and work it out. Do you threaten with divorce every small thing? Me, I'm tired though. Ah, in fact, I don't even know why I married you in five. It's looking like I'm packing away. I'm moving. Every minute you threaten with breakup. Why? It just shows lack of commitment. And sometimes you are commitment, committed, but because you can't handle the emotions when it comes to fighting. And maybe women also, I need to tell you. When it comes to conflict resolution or communication in general, you have to pipe down on the emotions. Don't kid them with your passion. <laughs> if you want to talk fight passion, call Pastor Tony. Yeah. The way I'm feeling is... <laughs> you have not talked to her, but Pastor Tony understand that. <laughs> she understands fully. After you have now finished divulging to Pastor Tony, she, Pastor Tony will now help you to arrange the conversation. <laughs> I remember my husband and I, if he wants to have conversations between you, now write one. <laughs> In his learning times, he write one. You see. Two. You see. I say it's as if this is the way. Oh, oh more. I left all those where I'm feeling, feeling, feeling. Myself, I became logical. One. If that's what works, do it. 
if that is what works for them, do it. Amen. Amen. Do you know that the Bible commands us to walk towards conflict? This is shocking. When I saw it, my eye opened. The Bible commands you to walk towards conflict. Don't run away from it. Hey, walk towards it. He said, if you are coming to church, you are bringing your gift. <laughs> Jesus, I thank you. Hello, hello. He said, I just remember that. Ah, Sister Balaji is offended with me. Jesus said, leave the gift. Don't take it away because the gift is mine. Leave it there. Don't, don't change your mind. Leave it there. Go and go and ask. What happened? What do I do? Why are you angry? Then talk about it. Another scripture says that if your brother is offended by you, in Matthew 18, if your brother is offended by you, or if you are offended anyone, go to the person and tell them. Tell them their faults. Tell them what they did wrong. Remember the way to tell them. Oh. Don't just go there and you'll be talking now. Like you're not trained. We are trained. Amen. Amen. So tell them about it. Bible says that if, you, if, if they agree, you've won them over. You've made a gain. It says if they don't agree, take it to an elder, an extra person. Let them hear. Amen. So in connection, in conflict, are you available? Are you empathetic? In confidentiality. I didn't even gist you. Omo, you know say my wife. They don't do ten abortion. Omo. She knows that my husband. He committed fraud in the bank. Do you share with others what I tell you in confidence? Do you use what I tell you in confidence? Do you use it against me to punish me? Do you use it to retaliate? Do you use it to embarrass me? Small, small, your wife is pregnant. And something happened, God forbid, to the baby. Babe, please, I just want us to keep it quiet. I don't want to say, quick, 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 you have gone to tell your mother. Stop it. You too. Small thing, your husband, you are going to tell your daddy. Daddy, please talk to him because I don't get it. <laughs> You'll soon get it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Then in crisis, are you loyal? When something happens, these storms of life, when it comes, can you stand the test of time? Can your strength stay? We're talking about trust. In crisis, in, because you come here before God and before man. You say, in, what's that thing they say in marriage? In sickness against health, I mean, how do they say? You committed to everything. When small shaking came like this, you just say, oh my God, I can't do this. I wasn't formed for this. I was formed for soft life. <laughs> soft life. Baby girl life. Life will life you. Amen. Bible says in Proverbs eleven thirteen, it says a god about gossip can't be trusted with a secret, but someone of integrity will not violate confidence. A god about means you go from place to place talking, talking, talking. A wanderer. That's what a god about is. Proverbs seventeen nine a. He who covers a transaction. <laughs> transgression six love but he who repeats a matter separates intimate friends so when you talk about you bring separation to your marriage praise god and we have to close can i have up proverbs 25 11 to 13. it's important that as couples you become each other's safe place you're my safe place. You're the place where I can relax. No guards up. I can chill. I can be myself. Bible calls it naked and not ashamed. It calls it fearless when I'm with my husband. I'm at peace. I'm safe. I'm secured. I'm honored. I'm respected. I don't have to form macho here. I don't have to form ego. She trusts me. Her heart trusts me. She, she trusts my leadership. She understands my strengths and my weaknesses and she honors me irrespective. 
it's important that you become each other's safe place. Bible says in Proverbs 25, in verse 11, it says, a word fitly spoken and in due season. So it talks about a word that is properly spoken, well spoken, effectively communicated and received. And in due season, a timing again, the scripture speaks about timing, about occasion. It says it's like apples of gold in settings of silver. I don't know if you can picture this. You know, an apple that is sprayed with silver and put in a gold uh, 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 bowl, in a gold vase. It's beautiful. It speaks of, you know, value, high value. Hallelujah. It says that a word fitly spoken and induces it's like it's something of high value. It's precious. Hallelujah. Amen. It, then it, it says in verse 12, it says like an earring or nose ring or an ornament of fine gold is a wise reprover. A wise reprover. Bible encourages us to be a wise reprover. When your spouse does wrong, are you able to reprove wisely? With love, with honor, bearing in mind their need, bearing in mind what the end goal is. That's who a wise reprover is. It says that it's like fine gold. Uh, uh, it said ornament of fine gold is a wise, is, it compared a wise reprover to an ornament of fine gold. Something that is of rare value. Something that is, that is, that, that is so precious. That's who a wise reprover is in the eye of God. It says that to an ear that listens and obeys. And what this talks about is that it takes two to tango. It takes you and your spouse. Both of you must work together for communication to be effective. So everybody needs to focus on themselves, not pointing fingers, but they need to focus on themselves and work on themselves. Work on yourself. Stop poking fingers. It says a wise reprover to an ear. A wise reprover to an ear that listens and obeys. And verse 13 says, like the cold of snow brought out from the mountains in the time of harvest, so is a faithful servant to those who send him, for he refreshes the life of his masters. In this case, God sends us. God is the author of marriage. And he's the creator of marriage. So he says that when you communicate effectively, when your marriage is peaceful, when your marriage is full of joy, when your marriage produces good atmosphere, where people can look at your marriage and look at it and say, oh, I want my marriage to be like this. The Bible says that it refreshes the, full, the soul of God. And beyond the soul of God, it refreshes the, the soul of your spouse. Praise God. And I just want to remind you your assignments. This whole week, starting today, take out 30 to 60 minutes daily. Try it. Your marriage, your relationship will go from zero to hero. And remember that you're not coming in there in that space of 30 to 60 minutes to fight. You're not coming to deal issues. You're coming to progress. So before you come, sort yourself out. If you need help with somebody, sort it out. Why I said that, it's because when you come with strong emotions, it's impossible to move forward. When you sort your emotions out, you can move. So sort your emotions out. Not that we're throwing away what they did wrong, but for the moment, you put it aside and work together. When both of you are good, bring the issues back and begin to resolve it. Praise God. Can we rise on our feet this morning?